Right, hello everybody. Um, so welcome to your next biology lesson. Today we're looking at land use and the effect of an increasing human population on land use. So for your starter, I would like you to just describe the consequences of an increasing human population. This is worth two marks. So I need you to pause the video for about five minutes, answer this question and then come back for the answer. Okay, welcome back. Um, so for our answers, you could have any two of the following. So you've got food shortages, increase in communicable or contagious diseases, an increase in pollution levels, increased deforestation and increased global warming. So any two of those would get you the two marks. Okay, let's press on. Okay, so to just recap land pollution, the growing population means that more general waste, more general waste is going into landfill. So because the human population is growing, we are producing more waste and land has to be cleared in order to create these landfill sites. And this also uh, results in deforestation. The landfill also attracts vermin such as rats and gulls, and this can increase communicable diseases. Um, as the waste breaks down, it produces greenhouse gases such as methane, and they contribute to climate change and global warming. Um, some places, especially more densely populated places, will use incinerators rather than a landfill where they literally just burn all the waste. However, this produces lots of smoke and carbon dioxide and that increases air pollution. So to kind of reduce the impact of our growing population on land pollution, we are often told to reduce, reuse and recycle the things that we go through to try and stop as much waste getting into landfill. There is also a risk of soil contamination, and this can result from runoff from agricultural fields contaminating the soil. So things like pesticides and herbicides that farmers will often spray over their crops to stop them being eaten by bugs and being taken over by weeds that can run off when it rains into the soil and into rivers and pollute rivers and soil that way. OK, so this is something I would like you to write down the ways that we use land. So the main way that we use land is agriculture, and this can be either growing crops or keeping livestock such as cows and sheep and pigs, etc. We also manage woodland to produce timber. This is when acres and acres of woodland can be chopped down and we use the wood for construction. And then we have human habituation or urban use. And this is just living areas for human beings like towns and cities. Some of our uses of land can be very, very damaging. And these include quarrying and mining and extensive urban use. So quarrying and mining actually destroy the earth and the land to reach ores which are underneath the earth. And you can quarry for things like tin or coal, etc. The biggest mine can actually be seen from space and it's in Utah, USA. It's called Bingham Canyon Mine. It's over 100 years old, over half a mile deep, and it's actually two and a half miles wide. It covers about 1,900 acres of land, which is the size of about 2,500 football pitches. It is a huge amount of land that has had to be demolished to make way for this mine. And in regards to human habituation, some of the largest cities have an impact on the biodiversity of an area just because of the amount of space they need. So the largest city in the world is actually Beijing in China. Its total area is more than 16,000 square kilometres. Compare that to London. London is actually only the 40th largest city and it only has a land area of 1,600 kilometres. So Beijing is about the size of 10 Londons. It's very, very, very big. I would like us to compare the impact of humans 10,000 years ago in the Stone Age to the present day. So if you have a look at these two side by side, 
10,000 years ago, you had about one person per square mile, whereas now we have 120 per square mile. So there's a lot more people using a lot more land for its resources. In the Stone Age, we lived very sustainable lives. We didn't have a lot of farming and we just hunted what we needed. We didn't bulldoze acres and acres of land for towns or for industry. Our impact on the environment was very low. Much of the land available to us was still wild and covered in forest. Hardly any of it was actually used for farming. Our present land use, however, 40% is used for agriculture. So that's farms and keeping cattle on and growing crops. Only 3% is actually for towns and cities. And 23% of it is wilderness. And most of this wilderness is going to be in places like the Arctic where we can't actually grow anything. And maybe in the middle of Australia, where there's very little water. And the remainder is used for industry, so things like factories. Okay. Peat bogs. This is a picture of a peat bog. It's a bit like a swamp. It's very, very wet soil. There's very few, if any, trees. And there's, very, there's lots and lots of species of moss living there. Uh, the water is very acidic and it's very low in nutrients. Um, these are important because there are some species that can only be found in peat bogs. So things like cranberry plants and sundew, and there's many species of butterfly and moth, which are important food sources for larger animals that can only be found in peat bogs. Peat bogs are usually found in areas of high rainfall, lots and lots of rain, very humid and very cool temperatures. So because of these cool temperatures and these high rainfall, plants grow very, very slowly. So this is why there's not a lot of trees there and things decompose very slowly as well. So you'll often find that things that have died in a peat bog, their bodies will still be there for a long, long time. It gets preserved quite well. And it's called a peat bog because of all the peat that there's, that's there. And peat is partially decomposed plants or vegetation. So the uses of peat bog it is the first step in the formation of fossil fuels. So the peat can actually be used as a fuel. People burn it to use as a fuel. However, it contributes to global warming because it releases carbon dioxide. Um, it's not actually considered to be a sustainable fuel because the peat actually takes a long time to develop, even though it's made out of plants. Uh, it's an important sink of carbon due to the decaying plants. And what a carbon sink is, is a long term store of carbon. Now, you should have done when you did the atmosphere unit in the carbon cycle in year eight. This kind of links back to that. So the peat is also used to improve the quality of soil. And this is when farmers and gardeners will come and take it and use it as compost for their plants. And it helps them to grow healthier plants. So a lot of peat bog is actually destroyed because we use the peat as a fuel and we use it as a compost. So got some questions for you to do. Total of seven marks after all these questions. What you need to do first is state two ways in which humans reduce the amount of land available for other animals and plants. Should be nice and easy. And then question two, all about peat bogs. Peat bogs are sometimes destroyed so that peat can be burnt as fuel. You need to give one of the reason why peat bogs are destroyed, explain the problem with burning peat bogs, and explain the effect that destruction of peat bogs can have on biodiversity. So pause the video here, um, spend about 10 minutes on this. You're going to want to spend a little while and then come back for the answers. 10 minutes, pause the video. Okay, welcome back. So here is your mark scheme. You can, for the first question, you could have any two from the following. So you've got building, farming, quarrying, logging, dumping waste. And you get one mark for each correct answer you've got there. For 2-1, another use of peat bogs is to use the land as farmland or to use the peat as compost. And then for question 2.2, you get one mark for saying carbon dioxide is released and another one for saying that it contributes to global warming. And then 2.3, it reduces biodiversity, one mark, because it destroys habitats or reduces the area for habitats. 
15 more marks. That's seven marks in total. Okay, last thing we're doing today. We have a, hopefully this is going to be quite straightforward for you. Humans reduce the amount of land available for other animals and plants. So use this information from the diagram and you need to state three ways in which it happens. So pause the video. You're only going to want to spend about four or five minutes on this at the most. But pause the video here, have a go at the question and then come back. OK, mark scheme. So you could have any three of these and you get one mark for each one you got right. So you could have building. If you said building of houses or roads or power stations, you can have that as well. Quarrying, farming and dumping waste. So that's one mark for each that you got correct. OK, this is a nice short and sweet one today. And um, there is a quiz for you to do after. And it's got some quick multiple choice questions and then a couple of long answer questions at the end for you to do. So once you've done this, go and do that quiz and I'll get to marking it as soon as you're done. So thank you very much for coming and I'll talk to you all online. See you later.